to our channel, Loving Handcrafts by BMW. So, today I'm going to bring you something fairly new. Um, I wanted to do another cinch project using my thermal cinch. So, I'm starting here in Canva, not in design space today. So, um, I just wanted to um, start here at this point because this is where I laid out my design for my book cover. You don't have to do this um, for your, I'm sorry I said book, but my journal cover. You don't have to do this. Um, this is just me using some products that I had already purchased and using Canva. Um, and I do pay for the Canva subscription, but you can certainly do this same thing with a free version. But um, so yeah, this is what um, I ended up doing. So I'm going to try to recreate it as best I can. This is not a Canva tutorial. Um, suffice it to say, um, I'm still, I've learned a lot, but I'm not an expert in Canva by any stretch of the imagination. But what I would tell you, if you do have Canva or you haven't used Canva before, um, you don't have to use this. You can use your, um, some, uh, what do you call that? Um, pattern paper that you have in your stash. Sorry, had to get there. Um, so what I ended up doing um, is, let's see if I can get there. Um, is do a custom design. So I did a custom size. I'm going to change this to inches. And then I use eight and a, uh, 11 by 8.5. So basically that's landscape mode um, or uh, orientation. And then um, for the journal, I'm going to cut that in half. So I'll end up with an eight and a half uh, length uh, booklet which goes by five by five. So I'm just going to click on recent. So as you can see, it's landscape, not portrait. And it's in its um, design. I'm going to, uh, in its layout, and then I'm going to, I want to go ahead and add in the rulers. So you go to file. Then you're going to go to settings. Then you're going to want rule, show rulers and guides. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to make sure I get my guide at 5.5, five uh, 5 .5, which it landed on. So, you know, that is exactly where I'm going to cut. But I just wanted to make sure I have a visual reference when I lay out things because I'm going to have, this will be the front half of the booklet in this. Uh, the journal and this will be the back page the cover page so then um now i'm good with that uh then i went to elements and then i looked for a background so i've been using this back up uh, this background here so i just plop that in and then I wanted to go ahead and stretch this out so it'll be the full thing. I think I can say set images background and then there you go. Um, I had purchased some images a while ago from um, from uh, Feather of Style. I think I had her, I might find it in my other video. Um, let's see if I can find that image. A lot of images in here. I do a lot of work in Canva. Okay, here we go. Um, so I had, um, again, you don't have to do this. If you wanted to leave this cover and if you just wanted just a plain background from Canva or if you wanted to purchase something from Create Fabrica or anything, you can certainly make this your own. But I purchased these images and I really wanted to use them again. Um, so this is what I decided to you to use them for. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over the concept because again, this is not a Canva tutorial, but I'll just select this young lady. Whoops. I mean, I got her in there twice. Um, she's kind of big. 
and um, that's like my focal point. Um, and then I wanted her sitting on something. So there she is. So she won't be floating in the air. Let me send that to the back. And I right clicked on my mouse to do that. And um, layers. And I want to send backwards. And then I'll just stick this on her. So she looks like she's sitting on the stool. There we go. And then if you make her, if I make her a little bit more proportional. But it's your choice how, you scale, how big you want to scale that up. Then I wanted copy first. Um, I think I could change the color of that from black to white. I think. I think. Uh, I don't remember how I did it. I really, really don't. I want the bigger stuff. I want to flip. I can't remember how to change the color. Hmm. I don't remember how I edited the color. Oh, there might be a black one in here. Not a white one. But in any case, you can actually, and this goes on the mug. I'm not going to go there because I can't remember how I did it. <laughs> so we're not going to worry about it. There might be, oh, there it is. Let's go to the first one. I saw, let me delete that. There it is. There's a black one. And then I wanted to add it in here. And um, this could be good as you can, and then, ah, nah, control Z. I'm using my keyboard again with control Z. I don't know what it is on the Mac. I, I've never used one, so. I'm trying to get it to come in and on itself. There we go, so I can get it on the cup. Might have to zoom in, and that's probably why I'm struggling. I'll zoom in a little. There we go. And then it's not quite straight. There we go. Then that's the coffee on the coffee cup. Um, and then could have swore. Oh yeah, and then here's a rug. I wanted the rug to be on here. So again, let me zoom back out a little bit so she wouldn't be floating in the air or nothingness. So I needed I needed her anchored. Sorry about that. I needed her anchored. And I needed the bench anchored. And then I will right click layers and send that up and send back. And then now everybody's there. You can move the rug up. You can get a position how you want it. Again, this is not a Canva video. I'm just giving you the straight how I that how I did things. I think I need to my mouth. And then you can get it where you want it. But what I discovered is I needed all of my elements a little further over to the right. So when I add my spine, I'm adding a three and a quarter inch spine that I didn't want my girl to be so, um, my, my elements to be, I needed it to be what we call right justified. I needed it over it to the right as possible so that my spine wouldn't cut off any of my image because it's been a lot of time putting this image together um so we just have to move some things i didn't want like over there but i needed it close to the edge as possible and i didn't need my rug going over so i'm not going to fiddle with it anymore because <laughs> it would take a little bit of time so suffice it to say wow this is what I ended up with. These are, and I did, I did it three times because I was practicing. Um, so I have different versions. So as you can see, this image is as farthest from this spine as possible. 
um, because uh, from the center point because it's where I'm gonna have my spine. And then I added my sentiment, believing is achieving. And I should have enough, see how I got it like, here's the center, so right there. And then I got another one. Now you don't have to do this again. This was me just using a resource that I had and not um, buying anything or purchasing anything else. And I did have uh, uh, paper in my stash. So once I did all of this, I ended up downloading it um, to uh, my downloads. And um, I didn't have to send it to, um, I didn't bring it into, uh, into Cricut because I could just manually cut that. So you would need a way to cut this in half. And I have a paper trimmer that I use to cut this in half. Um, right down the center at 5.5 and then I have a front and a back cover that's what I did in design space and then manually cut it um, I'm going to take you I'm, I'm sorry in Canva but I'm going to take you to design space now and because I needed to do a couple of other things and I again I am not the best person to cut anything um, in half so I did some stickers, so I'm not going to, again, this is not a real sticker video, um, but I used the sticker function in there and I picked some coffee related things, um, stickers for this project, and then just turned them into stickers. So I have a sticker page. This sticker sheet going to on my book is 5.5 by 8.5. And um, these are kiss cut stickers so that I have a sticker sheet. And I'm going to bring you down to my work surface and show you all of this. But I wanted you to kind of get the design idea. Um, and then I just made, put offsets behind all of these that didn't already have offsets. And then I just printed it out. I didn't catch this before it printed, that this and this wasn't um, aligned. So it kind of printed that one coffee cup up. But I, I wasn't going to fuss about it. Um, the other thing that I did in design space is I did a template for the inside cover. Again, I could have cut this manually. Um, I am not the best person to um, cut anything manually, at least straight. I'm better at it. But if I could get the Cricut to do the heavy lifting, I did. So these are for my back panel that I used um, my cardstock that I had in, um, in um, already in my stash so again these are the same uh, width and height 5.5 by 8.5 and so I cut all of that out and then I got everything labeled and ready to go um, so yeah let me take you to the work surface okay this is um, my final project so let me just say a few things about this which I I liked um, this is my spine. I made this myself. I didn't purchase it. This is what she looks like. And this is the back cover. And I made a boo-boo here, putting it on. I'm still learning. Um, this is my little spine. Um, this was my first attempt. My stickers didn't come out right. I didn't do kids cut. So I just tacked them onto a page because I really wanted a sticker page. So and, and, um, this is what, and then I have dotted sheets of paper I purchased from Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below. So yeah, this is the first booklet that I did. Um, and I'm fairly pleased with it. Um, I'm, it's not a hundred percent and I'm not trying to go for perfection, but I don't like little blemishes like this. Um, it's for personal use. Um, so yeah, so let me show you the cover page. Oh, before I go, go on to that, um, I don't like the feel of this laminate. I'm going to be honest. I use some self laminating, uh, self laminating, uh, thing. And I don't care for the feel of it. It's a personal preference. I don't care for it. I really, really don't. But, um, because this is an inkjet printer, um, 
and you need to like cover protect the ink because it will smudge and smear <clears throat> so what I had my thought process was is I'm gonna use some vellum I mean not some vellum some um, acetate just to cover the front to protect it in case I, something gets sits on it gets wet caught in rain whatever um, because this is too stiff for me this is way too stiff but that's my personal preference you could do you could certainly laminate this by um, by all means okay so before I get on that let me say what you're gonna need you're gonna need some acetate if you choose or some self laminating sheets um, and then um, I only laminated the um, front cover uh, I personally if I was gonna laminate it I'd use a pouch and laminate both sides but that's just me but I watched some videos and they only laminated the front cover okay um, then you've already saw that you've got your design so if you didn't want to go with the design um, this is going to be my next booklet this is going to be the outside I'm um, sorry journal this is going to be the inside cover um, and then I've got some chipboard that I'm going to use because you know that's a lot of fetching in the design space and putting the character and I, I figure I could do some stamping, I could do some uh, die cutting, I could do something other than, you know, using the Canva to create a, a scene on my front cover. But it is an option, and I like that option, because I have a lot of graphics that I can use, a lot of clip art, and a lot of things that I can um, do that with. Um, this will save you on some ink, I will say that. Um, um, and then uh, if, if I was going to, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to use my Cricut to cut out everything. I'm not cutting out a doggone thing using a paper trimmer. But you will have to have some type of paper trimmer. So I have my paper trimmer here. I love this. Um, um, and then this was the cardstock that I used. So as you can see, I made sure I labeled this 5.5 by 8.5. Um, this is my sticker, kiss cut sticker thing. Oh, that so came out so well. I'm so happy. I had to trim this down. I couldn't figure out in design space how it to do kiss cuts for this and then cut through the, the liner, um, like do two different styles, kiss cuts to this and cut it out of the liner. I'm sure someone's figured it out. I just hadn't found it. But I ended up trimming this as well. And then the other thing that I learned is, again, you want to keep everything over to the right because you're, um, you want to be able to get to these stickers and not have them be hampered up and by the spine. So for my um, spine that I made, this is three and a quarter. I found the center point and then I scored it a couple of times. I scored it. At, um a one half and three fourths and then I scored it again at three eighths because when I open my book I want to have a little bit of bend like that now this part this channel is already attached my glue strip this is for the glue strip to be nestled in there and then the idea is when no this is the way when I open my book I'll have a little bit of bend so it'll hopefully let the pages lay a little bit flatter because the um, one thing with the cinch is it doesn't say it's going to lay flat but with that little crease that extra crease in the front it will allow you to open the booklet a little bit flatter so you can write um it won't lay flat flat but it it is a interesting tack okay um, so I've got two acetates. Oh, I'm sorry, before I move on, this acetate one is cut a little bit longer, I mean wider, uh, yeah, lengthwise in the front, uh, in the, for the front cover, because you want to need a little bit of lip to catch it, just so you can move it back, like, yeah, so you can get to that. Okay, this is the one that I'm doing. Um, this is the front and this is the back and um, I did not glue and again I'm not a tape runner girl I just it just messes up uh, so I'm gonna use liquid adhesive to glue these together okay you're gonna need 
If you're going to use liquid glue, I have liquid glue. I have some type of a bone folder, um, some type of scra uh, tool to smooth things out. And I do have some score tape, um, some, some double-sided adhesive. And then for your inserts, which I did use Canva to make these inserts. Um, I use Canva, but what I forgot to do was do line both sides. Um, that was my mistake. I was supposed to do this. This is the same size as everything. Um, and I just used Canva. They have a template for, called Lined. And it just made this one sheet of paper and I cut it in half. Getting better at cutting things in half. And then I have some dotted line as well. So whatever insert you want to use. For this you could use just plain paper. I like stuff that has lines or dots or something so I can have references to write. But again, this is personal preference. You can do whatever you like. Um, you will need for your thermal scent, you will need a thermal scent if I haven't said that already. Um, you will need some glue strips. Um, this is what I've been using and I've been using quite a lot of them. Um, you don't have to make your own um, spines. You can purchase some already pre-made um, from uh, we, are, uh, we Are Makers. You can certainly do that. I like to make my own because I've got a lot of cardstock in my stash and this is one way to use it. Um, I'm going to put this all back in order. We're going to come back and then we're going to go ahead and assemble. Um, and then uh, we'll turn on the cinch. I'll see you in a few. So I am going to be putting together my front cover. Um, oh, before I... I remind you of the cover I used some photo paper but I also glued some heavy cardstock to the back of this to make it a little bit more substantial and when I glue this on this will make this even more substantial um so yeah I just had some photo paper in my stash some so that's what I'm gonna use um I did um have my Cricut cut this out um, and then I took some ink and kind of covered the white, the white core. Um, let me do it this way. So let me glue this on. It won't take that long to blot glue. I've seen people use tape runner and, um, their double-sided tape. That does not work for me. I tried and it did not work. Okay, so I got things misaligned and it looked crazy. And so I go with what I know. It's not my strength. Um, this is some really good glue. This is Barely Art. And let me bring it up. Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. Um, I usually have. Let me grab it. usually grab a brayer and just bray it down. Um, I haven't had any problems with this bubbling or doing anything. Um, I've been using this glue for a while. Um, and then this is going to be my back cover. So that's kind of like three layers of cardstock and one layer is that um, heavy, um, I think 110 pound cardstock. Um, because I knew I needed it. I wanted my cover to be a little bit more substantial. So basically it's three cardstocks gone, glued together. And if I had screwed this up with the score tape, it's so unforgiving. I couldn't have taken it down with the double-sided tape. I couldn't have rearranged anything. Okay, so that's my cover. Make sure I go back over it. And I'm just using that brayer to get that glue spread. So I'm not sure why I got a white margin here. I, I don't know. I, I'm not gonna um if it if if it bothers me too much, I'm gonna grab some ink and ink blend that out. Because <laughs> it is bothering me. Um, but again, it's just for me, so I'm not going to complain.
Um, yeah, that's how it's going to go. Okay. So I took a, this big sheet. I don't have, I think I put it away. So I took, when Cricut cut this out, it cut out and then I had like this left. So when my Cricut cut it out, I had about this much of this left. So I turned that into the spine and whatever that was, and I measured it and it, it was three and a quarter, one quarter quarter so this matches her pajama that's what got me liking that and so I am going to um I've seen it both ways I'm I'm torn um when I use the double-sided tape I got that little pucker there I don't know how to stop it I'm not real good at it um I've seen people attach I saw a, a youtuber attach everything get it all glued and then came back and put in um attach this and i've seen them where they attach the spine to the covers first and then um did their inserts so i'm not sure how i'm gonna go with this i haven't decided i've messed it up once i don't really want to do that so i'm feeling gun shy i don't want to mess it up again so i'm not sure um, but what I will do is get my vellum. Let's keep calling it vellum, my acetate. I don't know why I keep calling it acetate. Uh, my acetate. I'm gonna gonna take. <clears throat> I think there's a protective film over this. I don't know if so you can see it. There's a protective film over the acetate that you're gonna wanna uh, remove. It's just a matter of finding it. Um, you can have your Cricut cut this out. I did not, I did it manually. Um, again, like I said, I'm not the best at cutting stuff. So stuff comes out wonky and you just gotta know that that's the beauty of a handcrafted item. It's gonna be a little wonky. Um, I'm not one of those gifted ones that can cut straight. But I personally like the feel of this. Like, I really, really like the feel of that. Um, But I wanted to cut, uh, do my book. Now I'm trying to decide if I want to do that one or do this one and leave that big one in the back because then they'll lift up together. I kind of sort of see the appeal of, um, of um, laminating it, but I don't like the feel of the laminate. It's just something wrong with it on my fingers. It's just me personally. I don't like the feel of it. And I, ca I can't tell you why. Maybe I just like the feel of paper. And so it doesn't feel like paper anymore. Because it feels all stiff. And I don't want stiff. At least for me. Okay, so that was the film. It said you can do laminate. So I'm going to try and do laminate. Okay, so that's what that would look like, and then that goes in there. So what I'm going to do is turn on my cinch, and I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back, and I went ahead and got my cinch turned on. I grabbed a few supplies because I'm ready to put this bad boy together. Uh, yeah, make sure it is. I feel like I've lost something, and it's the back of the thing, thingy bob front. Um, I actually went off camera and cut a divider because, yeah, I did lose something. I wanted to, oh my God, how could I lose the vellum on my desk? I mean, the acetate. I keep calling it vellum. And make sure maybe I put it in there. The back acetate. Oh, it's a little Oh, 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 no, here it is. Voila, okay. Um, I wanted to add some dotted paper and some line paper, and I wanted to add like an insert in between the two so I can kind of visually see when my line paper is ending. I think this is too much to go in here. Um, it says you can do 50 sheets of regular copy paper, which all this is. Um, but I feel like I'm going to have too much. 
but um, this is how it's going to go. It's going to go here, here, nope, here, here, then the back, and then the uh, acetate on the back, like so. And like I said, I feel like this is too much for my little spine. Yep, you can tell it's too much because I'm going to take some paper out. I'm just going to take some of this out. I had initially planned on the insert. Um, so I want to get it, keep playing with it. I want to get everything to the left. and get everything lined up and then I'll check and see yeah that's a good good fit I don't know if you can see down in there I'll bring it closer and bring it catch catch up see how there's nothing doesn't look like it's bowing okay make sure that looks good and then I'm going to try to get everything aligned very well because I want it to be I'm concentrating on this side and then I'm going to use a binder oh, I really like the feel of that better much better than the uh, um, now here's where I'm torn <laughs> because again, I could, since I have this, I could go ahead and I, I prefer to use liquid glue. I have had such um, bad luck using the score tape, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use both because I have an awful time. And I think if I use the double-sided adhesive and the liquid glue on it, I might come out a little better because you can't position it. This stuff is like super, like super stuff and you can't move anything. So if I screw it up, um, it's screwed up. But I like the security of it. I'm going to do it this way. No, I'm not going to screw anything up. I'm just going to get this laid on here. And then when it finishes cooling and everything is stuck, I have the security of bending this back because I added that score line and gluing it. And if I have to, I'll use Leo Method and paint some glue on there. I'm not fiddling with that. I'm just going to be honest. I, I just cannot. Just I can't make a mistake again. This is that, That's a costly mistake with redoing and reprinting and redoing everything. Okay, so I got my spine top and bottom covered. That was another mistake. You gotta watch for that. And I'm putting this to hold that in place. And then I'm gonna drop it down in my um, thermal cinch. And if I need to hold it in place, I gotta grab one more. So I'm going to take you to the other side of my craft room. And um, I like these because they're metal and they won't melt. They, the cinch does give you one of these, just one. But this will keep everything in place. And then doing a lot of tapping to get the, the that edge to meet this edge. Okay, I'm going to take you over to my other side of my um, work surface and get that cinch going. And um, I'll be back once I get it buying, uh, get it the glue melted.
I'm back from the other side of my craft room where I turned on the thermal finch, put everything in the cinch, and then I let it um, cool down for five. So I did all of that after off camera. Um, so you didn't see that, but it's cooled down for five minutes. I've not touched it or anything. So we'll just take a look and see how well it did. If it didn't do what it was supposed to do, you can always go back and re um, put it back in the cinch and do it again. So first test, open the book. Uh, I'm going to take it like this for in back pages and then wiggle and see if anything pulls out. Um, this looks good. Everything looks good. Um, this could have been a little bit better right here. These pages didn't catch, but everything else looks good. I'm not going to cry about that. That's just a sticker sheet. Okay. So this is why I went ahead and added that, um, extra and I could go back and just get that back in there. And I might, um, once I get this glued down. This is why I have this extra flippy flop here, um, the score line, I'm sorry, so I can push this out. And again, me and uh, this might take a little longer since it's acetate, but I am not going to be using any liquid uh, adhesive double-sided tape unless I can um, master it because I haven't gotten it. Okay, so I am going to lay this down. Got some. I'll use my. And the good thing with the liquid adhesive, if it does come up, you can wipe it clean. I'm gonna grab a block. Um, I've got some weights to put on it. Uh, let me do the other side, um, and then I'll come back. And then I'll stick it under something heavy and let it set. But for the most part, this is done. This is all, I'll move that out the way. This is all done. Um, I might go back through and see if I can get that front page done, but I can do that off camera. Get that sticker sheet to get adhered well. Make sure I get these corners. And then, yeah, okay, I'm liking that a lot better. Um, and then I'm going to stick this under something heavy um, so that the glue can catch to the spine, I mean, to the cover. But I like the feel of the acetate. I like everything about this much better than the adhesive sheet. So I'm going to go stick this under something heavy. But um, this is my, um, these are my two. You can see that might, no, oh, yeah, that's fine. These are my two. Got two different journals back to back. They look pretty good. It looks like this came up a little bit. That's why I didn't adhere the sticker page. But other than that, clean it up with a little thing right there. And we're good to go. So if you like what you saw today, um, like, subscribe, comment. I'm no expert. I'm still learning. Um, this has like opened up a whole new world for me in crafting. I can see where I can do, like, I can't wait to do another cover. I've got some butterfly, um, uh, dies that I'm going to be doing next, uh, for my next journal. I don't know who I'm making these journals for. They could be giveaways. It could be Christmas presents, but I'm going to die cut some of the stuff add some stuff to these journals, just a new way to extend my die cuts and a new way of thinking about things because I love journals and I'm going to be making a planner next. I can't wait to do my own planner. Um, my planner that I purchased is almost, uh, it'll be over. Um, like it goes from June to June. So I can't wait to do my own planner. Um, because I buy one every year. Well, I'm not going to buy one this year. I'm going to make my own. So I can't wait to do that. That's a project coming up. Um, I had already started it, um, but I want to be able to add pages like inserts. So I, um, uh, if I bind it this way, I can't add anything to the journal. I can't add any, um, add any um, months or you know, or any other pages, or if I get an idea and I want to stick it in the journal, 
uh, for a design. I can't do that. I mean, in the planner, I apologize. But I did uh, recently discover the cinch, uh, multi cinch, where you can um, do the disc thing. I'm not sure about that disc thing, but you can add inserts. So I can make my own planner inserts using the disc. So I'm looking into that and that's probably what I'm going to end up doing because I've been hemming and hawing about it, but I can't wait. So sorry on a tangent, but again, like, subscribe, comment, um, happy crafting to you. Happy crafting to me. Um, and I will see you later. Crafty crafters. Take care.